Okay, don't have any tea. I forgot to make it, which is making me sad. I mean, I could always go and actually make some tea, but I just got everything set up. Ah. Life is so hard, guys. <laughs> Let's start at the very beginning, shall we? In the early 20th century, there were two ideas about the origins of the universe. The first was something called the steady state theory. And that basically said that the earth and the universe had always been. And the second was the big bang theory, which should sound slightly familiar. <laughs> Spoiler alert, this one turned out to be right. It proposed that the universe was finite. That basically means that it had a beginning and that beginning was hot, like, holy crap, my face is on fire and I'm melting into a big pile of goo, sort of hot. It was hot. Like my tea, which I'm going to pour. Yes! Look at that. Isn't that a thing of beauty? In the early 1960s, a guy named Arno Penzias had only recently just finished his PhD. He was working on this massive radio telescope called the Holmdel Horn Antenna. It's in New Jersey. For his own research, he needed to switch out the detector that was currently inside the antenna and switch it to something that was a little bit more suited to his own kind of research needs. But he and a colleague, Robert Wilson, decided to play with the one that they'd inherited a little bit because it was kind of unusual. The detector that was already there could measure really, really long wavelengths. They're called microwaves. So Penzias and Wilson decided you know, what better way to play around with a massive radio telescope and an unusual detector than to point it directly at the Milky Way. But they came across a little bit of a problem. You see, there was this noise in the background, this kind of undercurrent of data that was just persistent and it was there, like literally everywhere. It didn't matter where they pointed it to in the sky, that noise was there. They waited for different seasons, the noise was still there. I mean, they pointed it at the ground, the noise was still there waited for different times of the day. Noise was still there. It was literally everywhere that they looked. And it was only with this particular detector. So Penzias and Wilson were understandably annoyed, concluding that something was obviously wrong with the detector, with the instrument itself. So what do you do when something that expensive is messing with your data? You pull it apart, bit by bit. I mean, obviously, that's what I would do. Take a screwdriver to it, hit it with a hammer. To say that they were thorough would be the biggest understatement of the century. They were convinced that there was something wrong with their instrument. And so they went through it with a fine tooth comb. They crawled all over it, unscrewing bolts, replacing parts. At one point, they were crawling into these tiny little spaces with a toothbrush and cleaning off all the pigeon crap. And so anyway, convinced that they had finally cracked it, they turned the instrument back on and the noise was still there. So completely frustrated and having exhausted all of their options, Penzias and Wilson decided to get a second opinion. So they called a couple of physicists at Stanford University who had dedicated their entire careers to figuring out whether or not the Big Bang Theory was really a thing. These guys were Robert Dickey and Jim Peebles. And so Penzias called the lab and presumably the conversation went something like this. Hey guys, we have this noise. Um, it's in the background and it won't go away and it sucks and we hate it, uh, but now we're kind of thinking it might be a thing. What do you think? Is it, is it legit? Is it a thing? I've really captured the 1960s kind of psyche, I think, yeah. Robert Dickey hung up the phone after having quite a long conversation with Penzias about what it probably was and um, apparently turned to his laboratory and said, well boys, we've been scooped and then presumably went and cried in a corner. Seriously, I have a research-based PhD and this, this is my nightmare. You see, what Penzias and Wilson had unwittingly stumbled across was proof that the Big Bang Theory was actually a thing. What they had discovered was what we now refer to as the cosmic microwave background. About 13.7 billion years ago, right after the Big Bang happened, the universe was one massive ball of superheated plasma. Everything was hot. And where there's heat, there's light. And where there's light, there are these tiny little things called photons. Initially, a whole bunch of these photons were kind of flying around in between all of these electrons and protons and a whole bunch of other stuff inside this superheated ball of plasma. But because everything was super high energy, there wasn't really an awful lot of room for the photons to fly around. 
If you could stand inside the universe at this point, you know, without getting instantly vaporised in a billionth of a second, all you would see was a kind of opaque mass of stuff. And so as the universe started to expand, all of those particles had to travel further and they started slowing down. And so suddenly there are a whole bunch of these photons kind of zooming around, actually able to travel without getting absorbed by all of these high energy particles. All of this took about 380,000 years. As the universe continued to expand, the photons started traveling further and further and they started to lose energy. And so their wavelengths started to stretch until finally they became microwaves. But these photons had been traveling for an awfully long time. I mean, about 13 billion years. It'd be sort of like you or I running a race for 13 billion years where they kept moving the finish line further and further away as you got closer and closer and closer. I mean, you'd lose a little bit of energy too. And so these super low energy, long wavelength photons from the very origins of the universe, 13 billion years in the past, just kind of hung out in the background, just waiting to be found. And that's exactly what Penzias and Wilson saw when they pointed their antenna at every possible point in the universe that they could find. Their discovery revolutionized the way we look at the universe and really solidified the Big Bang Theory as a legitimate thing. It laid the groundwork for what we now call the standard cosmological model of the universe. Both Penzias and Wilson were awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1978. And get this, Penzias was planning on publishing these results as a little bit of an afterthought in a physics paper. I mean, ah. Uh. If you enjoyed this story, there are plenty more where that came from. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also make sure that you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to get notifications. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Um, and if you want any more links to further reading, have a look at my blog. There's a couple of bits and pieces in there that I couldn't include today, including some much better explanations of cosmic background radiation and the origins of the universe <laughs> from actual physicists.